Why is it that so many people believe that dinosaurs evolved into existence over 200 million years ago and died out 65 million years ago? Well, some of those reasons include, number one, our public education system. You see, in our public education system, evolution is being taught in many cases rather than real observable science. It's even being taught to exclude critical thinking skills. A second reason many people believe dinosaurs lived millions of years ago is the media that constantly promote this idea of dinosaurs dying out 65 million years ago. And third, and this is very sad, is called a lack of biblical teaching in many of our churches. But are there really any facts to support this idea that dinosaurs died out millions and millions of years ago? Well, I want to welcome you to Creation Training Radio and TV. I'm your host, Mike Riddle, the founder and president of Creation Training Initiative, where we train and equip other Christians to be able to teach about God's creation and how to defend their faith so that the next generation can also be taught that the Bible has answers. Well, today we have a special topic called, When Did Dinosaurs Live? How long ago was that? Well, now to cover this topic, when did dinosaurs live, we're going to cover two main areas. Number one, the origin of dinosaurs. Where did they come from? And secondly, we'll take a look at the scientific evidence for when they lived. Well, let's start with part one, the origin of dinosaurs. The common story here is that dinosaurs evolved into existence about 225 million years ago and then eventually died out about 65 million years ago, long before man was here. Well, let's take a look at some of the explanations for how this happened. And I'll start with a very popular magazine or journal called National Geographic. In January 1993, they reported this about dinosaurs. All probably evolved from a scurrying bipedal pheasant-sized reptile. Do you notice the word probably? In other words, they're not sure about this. Folks, this is not a fact, not even a theory. It's an unsure idea that they evolved from some creature that walked up on two legs. Then they go on to say this. How did dinosaurs take over the land? All we can say is that near the end of the Triassic period, about 220 million years ago, something extraordinary happened on the planet Earth a global mass extinction. Most creatures that survived were small. After the extinction, dinosaur populations exploded across the land. Why the dinosaurs? A lot of new habitats had opened up. Perhaps the warmer world favored their physiologies. Perhaps it was just luck. Did you notice what they said there, folks? They're not sure about any of this. This is supposed to have happened 210 million years ago, and yet they're making claims as if they really observed this. But don't forget that last statement. Perhaps it was just luck. In other words, they're not sure about this whole idea at all. And then we can take a look at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles, and they talk about the origin of dinosaurs. And I quote, the anatomical characteristics of both the earliest known dinosaurs and their archosaurian relatives suggest that the common ancestor of all dinosaurs was a small bipedal predator which had forelimbs shorter than hind limbs. Did you catch that word in there? Suggest? That's what I call a very fuzzy word. They're not even sure about how this happened. Now let's take a quote from two scientists. One has their advanced degree in zoology and their other advanced degree in biotechnology. And they state this. If sauropods evolved, now those are the four-footed plant eaters. If sauropods evolved, then why are there no fossil pre-sauropods that have at least two, three, or four of the uniquely sauropod features? In other words, what they're stating, folks, we can't find a single transition that led up to the dinosaurs. No one's been able to produce a single transition anywhere to support this claim dinosaurs evolved into existence. And we saw also from the museum and from National Geographic, all they can say is suggest and probably. Well, let's take a quote from our Illustrated Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs. 
and they state, the question of the origin of dinosaurs is one that has puzzled paleontologists for many years. There it is, your Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs saying, we don't know where they came from. Now let's go to our Smithsonian Institute. In May 2010, they stated this. The discussion over where dinosaurs came from in the first place is often overlooked. Hypothesis of dinosaur origins have been just as controversial as those of triggers for the end of the Cretaceous mass extinction. Notice they didn't say fact, they didn't say theory, they said hypothesis. They don't know. So when we look at the conclusion, where did dinosaurs come from? Here's our best answer. Scientists don't have any real evidence for the evolution of dinosaurs. Therefore, they make up stories and pass it off as science in our public education system. In addition, the idea that dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago, long before man was here, is also not supported by the evidence. Folks, let me give you the real evidence. And there was an eyewitness there. And here's what his eyewitness account is. It comes from Genesis chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Folks, that was day six of creation. Day six of creation. And you know what God created on day six of creation? the land animals, along with Adam and Eve. So there in Genesis chapter 1, the eyewitness, our creator God, stated, man and woman and dinosaurs lived at the same time. Now, is there any physical evidence to support this? Not that we need physical evidence, because if we're going to require physical evidence for everything in the Bible, folks, then we simply don't trust God's Word. Do you know in the book of Hebrews it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. If we really call ourselves Christians, we need to stand in the authority of God's Word and that His Word is true, or we don't trust it, and then we have to take a look. Do we really know God at all? And do we really trust his word anywhere? But you know, God did give us a lot of evidence. And I want to take a look at some of this evidence. When did dinosaurs live? You see, first of all, we have to understand that scientists, modern scientists, didn't really know what dinosaurs were until the 1800s. We had found some bones, but we really didn't know what they were until the 1800s. The word dinosaur itself is not found in the Bible because it was not invented until 1841. So the first thing we have to understand about evidence is modern scientists didn't know what they looked like until the 1800s. Therefore, any drawings or statements about dinosaur-looking creatures before the 1800s could be very powerful evidence people saw them alive. So here's our next evidence, called petroglyphs, rock engravings. These rock engravings are found all over the world. For instance, we find one in Arizona. Now you take a look at this picture here. This does not look, does not look like any creature alive today, including a giraffe, folks. Giraffes have four legs and a tiny tail. So this creature exactly resembles a dinosaur, and this dates before the 1800s. Here's another picture, but was found in Utah. This not, does not resemble every, any living creature today. I know there's some controversy about this. This particular creature was it erosion that formed part of this, or down through the rocks. But yeah, it looks like this was a real dinosaur. Here's another one. Now, this does not look like any living creature. It doesn't look like any dog I know, because dogs don't have necks that long. All these creatures exactly resemble dinosaurs, and they're drawn before the 1800s. That's pretty good evidence somebody had to see them alive. Unless maybe you think, this was just modern clay cave clip art. But I don't think so, because we find these pictures all over the world. Now, let's look at evidence, too. When did dinosaurs live? And this will be called Dragons and Legends. 
Now let's go over to Northern England. In Northern England, there's a cathedral called the Carlisle Cathedral. Now it was built in the 1200s, and again, that's long before the 1800s. Now you walk into this cathedral, and there's a lot of aisles, just like we have aisles in our churches today. But there's one very special aisle, and on this aisle is a carpet. Now that carpet is on top of a tomb. It's on top of Bishop Bell's tomb. Now, Bishop Bell was buried there in 1496, and again, that is long before our scientists, modern scientists, knew how to even put the bones together. Now, you lift this carpet up, and you see the tomb of Bishop Bell. And going around Bishop Bell's tomb are pictures of animals and dinosaurs. Now, how did they know to draw these pictures of dinosaurs if somebody didn't really see them? I'd say the evidence is mounting that dinosaurs and people lived at the same time. Again, I caution you, we do not need scientific evidence to support the truth of the God's Word. So now let's go over to Cambodia. Some ancient ruins were found in Cambodia dated to about 1200 A.D. Now this ancient ruin called Angkor Wat is a temple. Now, this temple has a lot of columns, and carved into some of these columns are pictures of animals and a very interesting creature, and you see that picture up here now, Stegosaurus. How would anybody know to carve a creature like Stegosaurus? That is a very unique looking creature. I would say they had to see this creature alive in order to carve that image. Now, a few years ago, scientists discovered a brand new dinosaur. Brand new dinosaur. But you know what about this brand new dinosaur? It looked exactly like we picture dragons today. Take a look at this picture here. It's called Dracorex. Now, the full name means Dragon King of the Hogwarts. This is a very interesting dinosaur. Look at the skull there. That looks much like what we draw dragons to look like today. And we continue to find these creatures, images of these creatures, all over the world. For instance, here's another one in Mexico, very light, but you can just make that out. It's a carving or drawing of a hadrosaur dinosaur. There it is in Mexico. Then we can go back to England. They found some gold coins in England. And guess what was engraved on those gold coins? a dinosaur. We find these again all over the world. Now we can go to Wales, sitting in one of the cathedrals over there, is an engraving, a carving of a hadrosaur dinosaur. And then finally we have the famous story of Saint George the Dragon Slayer. And we find the carvings of this dating centuries ago, and pictures of Saint George the Dragon Slayer dating back centuries long before our modern scientists knew about dragons. And we continue to find these all over the world. We go to France, and here's a carving of a sauropod dinosaur. And then we need to go to China. You know, the national symbol of China is the dragon. Where did they get these ideas of dragon-looking creatures? How about that picture we just showed you? A dinosaur that looked just like we picture dragons today. And here's a figurine of a dinosaur creature found in China. I say the evidence is overwhelming. The whole evolution story is nothing more than a story and cannot be supported scientifically. Well, let's get to the best evidence here. The evidence number three, soft tissue. Many dinosaur bones we're finding today are not fossilized. There's still real bone on them. They're not mineralized. They're not yet formed into rock. How can that be if they're 65 million years old? Not by any method we know of. Dinosaur bones that are still bone. Now, in 1993, scientists were out looking for some dinosaur bones, and they found the bones of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, these bones were big and heavy, and some of them had to be broken to carry them out. And when they broke the bones, something amazing was discovered still on these dinosaur bones. Soft dinosaur tissue. 
Yes, soft dinosaur tissue, soft elastic dinosaur tissue. You can actually take this tissue and stretch it and it comes back together again. Now this was not found by the creationists, this was found by evolutionists. And what did they try and do? Hide the evidence. But they failed. The evidence is out there today. Not only did they find soft tissue on this dinosaur, they also found blood vessels and blood cells. You can actually take this tissue and squeeze it and squeeze out red blood cells. There is no known way for that tissue and these cells to survive for that long. And it keeps getting better. In May 2009, National Geographic reported this, and I quote, the fossilized leg of an 80 million year old duck-billed dinosaur has yielded the oldest known proteins preserved in soft tissue, including red blood vessels and other connective tissue, as well as perhaps blood cell proteins. Folks, how can this be 80 million years old? Did you know soon after something dies, the red blood cells, the DNA, and the proteins begin to break down rapidly? Folks, there is no known way for this. So what has been the story from the evolutionists about this. And I quote, still unknown is the chemistry behind such preservation. In other words, folks, they don't know how it stayed around. Do you know if you read the Bible, you're gonna find out. No known way for this to occur. The evolutionists have no answer. They're just holding on to the belief in evolution, even though the evidence does not support evolution. Folks, this is what you call faith, blind faith, because they have no evidence for their story, but yet they're gonna hold on to that story regardless of what the evidence has to say. This clearly shows you in this whole battle between evolution and creation, evidence is not the issue. It is evolutionist faith in what they believe. It is their worldview and they're not going to change regardless of the evidence. You see, the evidence does not support evolution. It's all of a matter of making our children want to believe in evolution rather than Jesus Christ. You know what? They're doing a good job of it. They're out there convincing this next generation that dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago, long before a man was here. That is sad because we need to come back in our churches and start teaching God's Word that in the beginning God created, and on day six He created the land animals, which included dinosaurs and people. When will our churches and church leaders start believing God's Word? But wait, there's more. I love those commercials. Scientists believe they have found unfossilized dinosaur protein from the bones of embryonic animals that died out at least 190 million years ago. This is incredible that they would believe this. It's not about evidence, it's their worldview, and the worldview says there is no Jesus Christ creator and savior. Did you know we can take our children back? If we start teaching in our churches the authority of God's word and start believing it, we can make a major change in this next generation. We can teach them that they too can believe God's word rather than man's wisdom. Well, there's still more. In 2012, a new discovery occurred. And this is from the American Geophysical Union and the Asia Oceania Geophysics Society. This is not a Christian organization. And here is what they reported in 2012. Carbon-14, dating of multiple samples of bone from eight dinosaurs from Texas, Alaska, Colorado, and Montana, revealed that they are only 22,000 to 30,000 years old. This is from the evolutionists, their own research. They discovered through carbon-14 dating these dinosaurs were only a few thousand years old, not millions. What have they done with this report? They've taken it off the web and they have censored it. Folks, this is not science anymore. 
This is called censorship. This is not education anymore. This is called censorship. The evolutionists are afraid of the real scientific evidence, and they're afraid of letting other people know about this evidence. The fact that we're finding carbon-14 in these dinosaur bones is powerful evidence that could not have been dead that long. Now, we don't trust the 22,000 to 30,000 plus years. Why? Because carbon-14 dating is based on an assumption, and that assumption was proven false. It's only reliable up to about 3,000 plus years. But the fact that we're finding that carbon-14 in there means these creatures can only be dead a maximum of about 80,000 years. Far too short for the evolutionist story of millions and billions. So what is our conclusion here? The scientific evidence really does support the Bible. Dinosaurs and people lived at the same time. We look at the fact of all these petroglyphs we're finding around the world. All these carvings we're finding in cathedrals and other places around the world. The figurines we're finding of dinosaurs, all dating before the 1800s. The fact that we're finding carbon-14 in dinosaur bones. All point to these creatures lived at the same time as people. See, we really can go back to the Bible and trust it. Genesis chapter 1 does teach that man and dinosaurs were created on the same 24-hour period. We read in Job chapter 40, another amazing count. Job chapter 40, verses 15 through 18, and here is what it states. Look now at the behemoth which I made along with you. He eats grass as an ox. See now, his strength are in his hips, and his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like beams of bronze, his ribs like bars of iron. Folks, that does not sound like an alligator. You see, this creature is being described as a plant eater. What do alligators eat? Us. So this is not an alligator. This is not an elephant or hippopotamus. If you take a look at the tail of an elephant, hippopotamus is something very, very small. This creature has the tail like a cedar. A cedar is a large tree. So this sounds like a very good description of a dinosaur in the Bible. Job chapter 40, verses 15 through 18. You see, as Christians, folks, when we come down to it, as Christians, we are to use God's Word as our authority. See, if we accept the evolution story of dinosaurs dying out 65 million years ago, then we must ask ourselves this question. What was going on for these 65 million years before Adam and Eve were here? And the answer would be death, decay, and disease. You see, once you start believing like the world, you give up the authority of God's Word and you start believing man's wisdom, you have undermined the entire foundation for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because these dinosaurs would have been living and dying all those years, along with many other creatures, decay, destruction, including what we call cancer, because we do find signs of cancer on some of these very old bones. And in Genesis 1.31, God would have called all that very good, folks. Do you really believe God called cancer very good? Do you really believe God called dead things very good? Because when I turn to Romans 8, 20 through 22, God tells us, all of creation groans. All of creation is in decay because of one man's sin. In other words, because of Adam and Eve's sin, things, including people and dinosaurs and other creatures, began to physically die. The Bible is true. We can trust it. Now, we believe things when you look at the Bible. When you look at the Bible, we believe things that on their surface may appear to be almost absurd. For example, a donkey talked? A snake talked? A man survived in the belly of a big fish for three days? And a man dead for three days came back to life? Why do we believe those things? Because God told us. If, brought, if, see, if God brought this universe into existence merely by speaking it into existence out of nothing, then why is it so difficult to believe that God created dinosaurs on day six? Why is it so hard to believe a donkey talked or a snake talked? Or a man lived for three days in the belly of a large fish? 
See, when we turn to God's word in Acts 26, verse 8, it reads, Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? You see, God told us he raised the dead. Jesus Christ was dead for three days and came back to life. God raised him. Do you really believe that? See, if God did all that, then we can also believe, as his word states, people and dinosaurs really did live at the same time. And that is our conclusion. It is God's word is true and man's wisdom is false. Thank you and God bless you. If these lessons had been a blessing to you, you might consider financially supporting the Ministry of Creation Training Initiative. You can do this by going to our website, creationtraining.org. Again, that's creationtraining.org. Your tax-deductible donation of just $20, $50 or more a month, or a one-time gift of any amount will make you an education partner in building an army of Christian educators who can teach the biblical account of creation and train others to be able to defend their faith and be biblically faithful to God's word as it states in 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear.